live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to the district, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman, day two of the AWS Public Sector Summit. We saw Teresa Carlson yesterday, a lot of keynotes. We saw the CIA. Todd Osborne is here. He's the Vice President of Alliances of New Relic, a company that's been smoking hot, $6 billion market cap, and really has taken the world by storm. He's joined by Scott Drosis, who's the President of Infinity, who's a public sector consultancy. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Good to see you. Thanks, Thank great you. to be here. So Todd, you heard me. I mean, really, everybody's talking about New Relic. Stock's been, been smoking. I, I read an article recently. It's got, it's got to cool off. It's too hot. So, uh, why so hot? What's going on? Why the appeal of New Relic? Well, as, as uh, um, uh, our CEO, Lou Cerny, has been on a couple times talking to you about, uh, every business is becoming a, a software business. In the public sector, which we're here representing at the, at the uh, Amazon uh, public sector event, it's the same thing with agencies and all the digital experiences that are happening across all the government, and, and whether it's education, higher ed, uh, healthcare, uh, any of the um, uh, DOD or other agencies, there's always some sort of digital experience that, the, that folks are having with the citizens that the, all the agencies and organizations are trying to support. And New Relic's right there, right there at the forefront of every one of those digital experiences. Um, uh, everyone's running software that's modern software or shifting to that with modern software, running microservices, running containers, um, shifting to the cloud and anyone deploying that type of software needs to have New Relic as part of their engagement to monitor what's happening at the citizen or the customer level, what's going on in the back end on through the infrastructure, and, um, and New Relic, whether it's a, a, a um, large enterprise that were out there like, like Dunkin' Donuts or, or Domino's monitoring their, their applications and, the, and uh, their e-commerce sites, or it's a, uh, a, an agency in the public sector space, you got to have New Relic as part of those engagements. So Scott, when, when AWS services first came out, you know, 2006 time frame, we looked at it and said, okay, this is the future, but as much as it potentially simplifies lives, it brings a lot of new complexities. So you know, Stu and I used to talk about, look, the AWS is awesome, we're big fans, but the ecosystem has to grow. Consultancies have to you know, come out of the woodworks and help customers really adopt. So that's really exactly what's happened. I presume that's how Infinity got started. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the company and and what your value is. Sure, thanks Dave. Uh, so Infinity is a 15 year old company. We are originally founded in uh, public sector IT consulting and we realized uh, several years ago that the world was changing and that we needed to make the shift from IT consulting to cloud services. And so we dove in uh, you know, head first with uh, AWS uh, and we really tried to move to the top of the curve very quickly and so we were a little bit ahead of our market uh, in public sector, being a public sector focused organization. Um, but we felt it was important to get ahead of the market uh, because now the market really is smoking hot. Uh, but we, um, we, we thought it was important that if we're going to move into the, the cloud, we wanted to move to the top of the curve and deal with things like DevOps, uh, migrations, uh, even machine learning, predictive analytics. So we're, uh, we kind of pride ourselves on being the Doing, having some of the largest public sector contracts in the U.S., uh, even though we're right now predominantly California-based, California-focused. And, and how, what's your headcount? Uh, we're about 100 people. Yeah, I mean, it's just the thing. We're seeing this trend toward a lot of, you know, smaller specialists are really doing super. Why is that? How are you able to, to differentiate from these big global SIs that have you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of employees, vertical expertise, why, why are you guys winning? Well, first of all, I think we're able to be nimble and, and shift our focus pretty quickly to, to serve our market, to serve our customers, uh, I think, more successfully. Uh, but one of the things that's changed when the cloud arrived is the cloud really let smaller organizations like us um, act like big organizations. So we didn't need to go deploy millions of dollars of capital to go you know, set up a massive data center. We can build a, you know, an environment on the fly, as you know, in the cloud, yep. and we can have access to world-class platform tools like New Relic, and uh, we can help a customer, a large customer, um, perform just as well as if we were a large, you know, uh, multi-billion dollar services organization. 
Todd, one of the interesting things to talk to customers about is you know, their journey and where are they and you know, the cloud migration and how do they do this. I, I, I reinvent a year or two ago, I heard uh, there, there were like, you know, the, like seven or nine R's as to get there, anything from the full refactoring yeah. and building cool new stuff with you know, serverless and things like that to just the replatforming, you know, lift and shift. Is that a good thing? Isn't that, maybe walk us through how New Relic with Infinity, how are you involved in some of those migrations? What, what are, there's no typical customer, but give us some, some examples. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Infinity, just like uh, many of the uh, integrators that we work with, are, are all delivering services generally in a couple different areas. One is, is typically a cloud adoption or cloud migration practice. So working with Amazon, how do we get more and more of customers' workloads shifted to the cloud? Usually those projects are also going on with something in the refactoring world or applic application space. Usually they're also developing uh, or shifting to some sort of a DevOps practice. Um, and that's also part of our sweet spot, what's happening in the application there. Whether it's on the cloud yet or not, we're going to provide that visibility to that. And then the third piece is there's usually something else happening with that, as I was mentioning before, the customer experience or the citizen experience. So what's the browser impact? What's the user experience on that? What's the, uh, if it's on a mobile, uh, mobile app, what's the user experience on there? So while Infinity's delivering all those services for the clients, New Relic's part of all those services. So, so our whole model that we're trying to do with all of our partners is embed ourselves into all of those services such that we can help Infinity be more successful, deliver those projects on time, and, and really resolve any issues that may come up during those migration issues. Yeah, yeah Scott, I, I'd love to hear especially, you know, I, I know I hear you know, DevOps talked about a lot in New Relic's customers. Is it pervasive around uh, the, the, the agencies and, and that, that you work with? And uh, yeah, but please do add some color there too. So, so in, in the public sector, um, it's a range of, um, of readiness, but we're seeing a, a, a real wave building, we believe. Um, we worked with New Relic uh, on a, a very large uh, DevOps, uh, SysOps, very complex cloud services engagement, largest uh, higher education uh, cloud services engagement in the US. And uh, in that case, just like Todd was referencing, we, uh, when we implemented uh, the migration of the legacy platform to the cloud, you know, first of all, we had to do, make choices around refactory, host, re-architect, and so forth. Um, but then when we're managing that environment and there's millions of users hitting that environment, you know, we need to be able to make sure that we can monitor the application to make sure the application's performing well. And if there's an issue, we want to see the line of code that's causing the problem as quickly as possible so that we can keep the environment you know, up all the time. Even though public sector may not be driven by the same financials as, say, commercial, uh, they still expect to be up all the time. They still want to take advantage of the benefits of the cloud. Uh, and so uh, New Relic allows us to do that. But then um, as we're looking at the, the user's interface with the application, application environment, New Relic's um, browser and mobile, you know, they let us you know, monitor how that experience is going and we can proactively get at you know, the, the performance issues there that the application may not tell us as, uh, if there's an issue there. And then uh, we can do things like uh, test middleware with synthetics and make sure that the whole environment's working. And then obviously on the infrastructure side, um, it lets us make sure that we're optimizing the environment for our clients. You know, one of the cool things is, you know, when you, in the past, you'd set up a, you know, an EC2 instance, you may not see that you don't need as much you know, CPU as, you, as, you're, as you're using, and so you can, you, know, you can size that appropriately and allow your, uh, allow your environment to still run uh, at a high performance, 100% uptime, but you know, give them the cost efficiencies at the same time. So we, we use New Relic across the board to help support the entire environment. If we could talk about <clears throat> the marketplace a little bit, generally and then specifically the, the, the public sector. So, Scott, I, I, I presume you're obviously public sector focused, but are you exclusive to AWS? No, you probably do some other stuff, is that right? Is that fair? Well, we, we, we are uh, both uh, AWS and Azure Gold, okay. which is a partner, but we, we, are, we do more of our work in, in AWS for okay, sure. Okay, so then we'll come back to that. And, and New Relic, of course, you're a software company. You want everybody to love your software, so. If there's a cloud that a customer wants to use, you want your software to be on that cloud. F fair enough? For sure. Okay. Um, and also on-prem. I mean, a lot of our, a lot of our applications right. we monitor are still on-prem, and uh, there's a tremendous amount of value there, regardless of the I would just add, you know, Infinity is a trusted advisor. We like to see ourselves as a trusted advisor, so we do feel like we have to be multi-cloud and have, a, have, have, a, have a, an objective perspective. And, and New Relic is presumably the same way. I mean, let the customers decide. So, Sure. So, and it's a hybrid world, folks. And despite what Amazon wants, it's a hybrid world, and they even recognize that. My question is, there's a lot of discussion in the industry about Amazon as an infrastructure service provider and, and their lead or, or relative lead on the competition. 
it's our sense that there's still a lead there. Um, what's your sense? Well, AWS is still the leading you know, cloud services uh, provider in the marketplace. They lead in innovation, they lead in, they lead in disruption, um, they lead in you know, market share, I mean, they lead in so many metrics. Yep. And because they had that lead, you know, it, uh, and that's where we started, you know, we've you know, benefited from that and we've invested heavily. And in the same way we see New Relic, uh, when we had a, made, a, made a choice around who we were going to pick as a platform to support our customers, we wanted something that was cloud-born, didn't come out of on-premise and get sort of bootstrapped into the cloud, and we wanted something that was a complete platform. So New Relic was, was, was a really a, a clear choice for us. It was not a, uh, we looked at the entire market when we, when we made that choice. So the, the, the narrative in the market used to be, so security in the cloud, uh, now we heard the CIA say, hey, the, the security on the worst day in, in Amazon's cloud is way better than I ever saw with client server. That was a pretty powerful statement. So let's assume security, people are relatively comfortable with security these days, even though I'm sure there's still some issues with regard to corporate edicts and flexibility and audits, let's put that aside. SLAs is another big one. People often you know, criticize the public cloud SLAs and cost, oh, it's so expensive, I can do it cheaper on-prem. Um, are those myths, are those realities? Is it a, is it, a it depends? What's, what's your sense? Um, I mean, they're all, uh, they're all factors that all of our customers are, are looking into. Um, I would say what, what we're hearing a lot about right now is how do we help provide more visibility to everything that's happening? So if you've got a, a developer now that has the, the ability to have to write code, put it on any cloud they want, spin up containers, spin down containers, go try out serverless pit, uh, base of architectures. They've got a lot of flexibility to do they, what they want. Governments, uh, agencies, as well as customers, one of the things they're looking for is what's actually happening, who's doing what. The governance piece is a, is a big piece of that. I think New Relic plays right into that um, in, in terms of helping control all that. One of the things that we're, we're uh, is one of our sweet spots is um, as you move to DevOps and a, a, a truly microservices architecture, one of the whole values of that is speed, keeping up with all, how fast the whole market is moving. And, uh, and customers and, and agencies, what they want out of that is to deploy applications where they're releasing multiple times a day. You have to have visibility into everything you're doing across the stack to be successful in that. Uh, and that's, that's really New Relic's sweet spot in, in terms of doing that. So providing a visibility, instrumenting the applications and the infrastructure before, and then helping provide visibility to things like governance, things that other, not necessarily um, uh, our sweet spot, but other companies in the industry are doing things uh, throughout the DevOps life, uh, life cycle um, in, the, um, in the governance realm, things like that. So we're, we're part of that ecosystem that's, um, that's helping Amazon and the other cloud providers be very successful, helping customers and agencies be very successful deploying modern applications. It's all about that visibility. Yeah, Scott, one of the things when we look at any rollout of new technology or, or migration, once it's up and running, then what? So wondering you know, how, how you, your, your firm's involved with, you know, is there retraining, is there, you know, things go on, once, once this is in place, you know, now what? Well, Infinity, what we found in public sector is that everybody wants to take advantage of the cost efficiencies and the benefits, and uh, most, most public sector isn't going to reduce cost, they're just going to want to reuse costs more wisely. So some of the confusion around you know, cost savings is that they're getting way more for their dollar uh, in, the future, in the future state. Um, and the choices you have to make around how fast you want to get to the cloud and what you want to get out of the cloud when you're there, um, those all affect uh, the equation of terms of what your actual outcomes are immediately and in the long term. So we often see that in public sector, some of the legacy applications, they may not uh, naturally or easily move uh, all at once, and so you have to make a choice. Are you going to do some refactoring or architecting before you get it there? Are you going to get in the cloud now and then do, the, do it afterwards? Either way, there's benefits, but you have to make choices about what you, yeah, you want to When you it. talk about like, after I've rolled this in, you know, I've heard from some customers, they're like, after I've gotten a cloud, I love it, but I had to dedicate an engineer for financial architecting because there's all of these things we need to do. Are we still in that state, you know, and it, 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 once again, do you, do you help with some of the training as to, okay, or is it plugging them into the Amazon ecosystem and well, uh, how do they get certified and ready to use all of this? So Infinity works with clients differently. We work with some um, in, a, in a more episodic, lighter capacity, and we work with some in a holistic capacity where we are that, that engine for them, but we provide the, impl the complete cloud services team to do everything from uh, migrations, uh, architecture, uh, DevOps, SysOps, DevSecOps, you know, machine learning, um, and, and all the way through. And so when we're 
when we're providing those services, uh, we're doing those kind of things. We're, we're making sure that you know, the next uh, improvement is worked into the architecture. Um, you know, last year, the customer I was referencing earlier, we did a, just under 100 releases. So that's 100 releases that we're you know, using the new Relic platform and our architecture, our, our solution architects rather, to make sure that it's faultless, that, you know, the, that the, uh, the process is efficient, it's effective, it's secure, and that we're driving efficiencies wherever possible. So it really depends on what the customer wants. If the customer wants to own the environment, they may have to go a little slower to account for their learning, their learning curve, and we'll help them if that's what they want. But if they want to go faster and they want to take advantage of our expertise, we make that available and we're happy to do that. Um, we had uh, the former CTO of the NSA on yesterday, who now works for Accenture. And we were asking about sort of, you know, uh, federal versus commercial, you know, are, are we sort of still taking learning lessons from commercial and bringing it to federal, or is it because federal has so much interesting, you know, technology around analytics, does it go the other way? And he said, it's funny, when you're on the inside, you think all the innovation is going on outside. <laughs> now that I'm on the outside, I say, wow, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in, in federal. We heard Teresa yesterday talk about Aurora, she talked about the VMware partnership, so things that were announced you know, a while ago in, in, and actually being adopted in, in commercial coming into to federal. So, so how does it work? Um, is it more of a two-way than it used to be 20 years ago? And I wonder if you could comment. Yeah, yeah well, from Infinity's perspective, absolutely. Uh, we work with clients to understand the problems and where they want to get to, and then we innovate with them. Um, we, you know, you're pretty dependent on the subject matter expertise of the organization, and I think our customers like that. They like that they're part of the solution, but then they need the expertise that we bring to, to create the, you know, the, the next generation solution. We just created something in the higher ed space called the uh, College Cloud Architecture Builder, and it was after uh, teaming with a, 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 a specific college and working in that space for a long time, but we, we wanted to create a way for uh, colleges to rapidly um, implement a complete architecture integrated with all the different things, including New Relic, um, quickly and successfully successfully, and that was done in partnership with them. So we, we did the work, but we couldn't have done it without them. Todd, you're a New Relic, obviously, you're a, you're, a, you're a believer, you drink the Kool-Aid every day. Why New Relic relative to the competition? How do you guys differentiate? Pitch me. So it's really all about um, being successful in that modern software space, again, as, I, as I've mentioned, and so uh, New Relic is the only um, uh, SaaS-only platform, so we're not going to put anything on-prem. We've got ourselves, one of the um, uh, one of the biggest and best DevOps team that develops our software. We roll code every day, and our customers get the benefit of us being a pure SaaS platform. Part of that is scalability. Um, the, what we can do at scale is, is unbelievable. There was a, a, a customer that was just talked about on the news today that, um, that I can't mention, but they just went from, from basically zero to $100 million on, the, on an application uh, just in the past 90 days. It's one of our customers and we've scaled, but we have no problem scaling with customers that are doing things like that. Um, and, uh, and, and again, the, the full platform value that we have now, looking at everything from the front end on the browser, browser and, and mobile applications, through the application, which is core to us, which is where we provide that code level visibility, the ability to trace across all the different microservices that are happening, connected back to that infrastructure. That full platform now provides such tremendous value um, up and down the stack, but, but not only to the technology leaders, but also to those folks that are, that are business leaders, chief marketing officers, you know, heads, of, heads of practices that are at uh, the consultants we work with. All these folks are all getting value out of New Relic. What would that customer who should not be named say <laughs> about the value contribution of New Relic to that scale? The, the value is unbelievable. So we're, I mean, they, I mean that's, a, that's a commercial customer, but their business is, is taking off like so many of our customers' businesses are at an unbelievable scale. They can't be hamstrung by having to do a server upgrade or having to um, uh, go back, you know, working with a release of code from a couple weeks ago. They have to be as fast as possible because their business is moving so fast, their agencies are moving so fast that they need a, a provider and that's going to provide that visibility to that, to that as, as at the speed with which they're moving. Awesome, so, uh, you got one more? No, we, we, oh, we, yeah, we, we got to go. So, so uh, <laughs> just last question, impressions of, of, of AWS Public Sector Summit, 
I presume you guys, like we did, had a rest issue yesterday. There was some logistic issues, but <laughs> other than that, you know, maybe you could give us your last word on, uh, on the summit. Well, Affinity is very committed to public sector, so we really enjoy coming to the public sector summit. Uh, it's great to connect with our partners, like New Relic and, and others, and it's great to see the, 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 latest, the latest innovations coming out from, uh, from AWS. Yeah, and, and I've been to, um, I, I don't know, 10 or so uh, summits around the world uh, so far this year. It is unbelievable the, uh, the, the excitement and the amount of people that are, that are now excited about what's happening in the cloud adoption world and Amazon's piece in that and, and what's happening here in, in DC this week is, is no exception. Yeah, I, I, would, we, I would second that. I mean, it's been a while since I've been at summits. Stu, you go all the time and they are just exploding and growing and this is one of the one of the best that's out there. So thanks guys for coming on theCUBE. Thanks really so much appreciate Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest after this short break. John Furrier's here. You're watching theCUBE live from AWS Public Sector Summit. We'll be right back.